Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Read real quick the definition of red herring. Red herring. Because what the captain is saying is, um, he's not saying that this coronavirus thing is not true, because it very much so is. It's a real virus that they put out there. But what it is, is like he said, the narrative that's out there is that, okay, now the attention is this way. Now you hear less cases of coronavirus breakouts and stuff. You still hear it, but now this is how they're gonna gear your minds. So while, while the Lord has set up his prophets, his sanctuaries that you're in right now, and so that you can, number one, stay focused in him and don't be distracted by these events. And you can be able to, Christ said this, he said, in your patience, possess ye your souls. I cannot tell you how many uh, pictures and posts that we've seen of brothers and sisters going back into the sin highly right now because of this pandemic. So many cases of sin being bred in just because of they have the mentality of this is the end of the world. So I got to do whatever I need to do right now because this is my last YOLO situation. Y'all get what I'm trying to say? This is the life. This is the mindset that they in. Uh, you got the definition of that? Red herring. Red herring. Something, especially a clue mm -hmm. that is or is intended to be misleading or distract so a lot of this stuff are distractions to keep you focused because while they have your mind on this they're doing things in the backs and, and behind the scenes all right so while they got the corona thing out there trump is doing something else behind the scenes y'all get what i'm trying to say all to keep you in the confusion of worrying about the world all right that's it i'm sorry like I said, this whole thing it is virus that i mean don't get me wrong that's the reason why y'all had to stand in the line and <laughs> You know, be tested and make sure nobody's running the fever because we don't want nobody getting infected. But it, more so looking at this whole thing, it, I think it's a Trojan horse to lead to something greater uh, of, of what they have behind the scenes uh, that they're not telling us. But that's the world. Let's, let's, let's focus on the most high's world. Let's get into so the book of Sirach, chapter 36, verse 1. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 1. Have mercy upon us, O Lord God of all, and behold us. So... Sirach was saying in his prayer, have mercy upon us, O Lord God of all. And do what? And behold us. So what he was saying, when you go to Psalms 83, let's get that real quick. Basically what he was saying in the beginning of this prayer, have mercy upon us. Judgment is going out through the earth, but have mercy, O Lord God of all. And do what? Behold us. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and so, be not still. So basically, Sirach was saying in his prayer, consider, consider what we're going through. Consider the judgments that you're putting out upon us, and have mercy. Behold us. Consider our situation. Let's go back to Sirach. Sirach chapter 36, verse 1. Have mercy upon us, O Lord God of all, and behold us. And send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. So he was also asking that the Most High said, he was asking the Most High to send his fear upon all nations that seek, that seek not after him. Because ultimately, the whole world will reverence one God. He's our power, meaning he is, he's only, his only intention is to give us his blessing because we are his children. 
but ultimately, the overall plan of the earth is have all flesh worship the Most High God. That is the reason why we must be established, and then they fall in line right afterwards. I'm gonna prove that. Let's get the book of uh, let's get first. Let's get the book of Ephesians. No, Isaiah 66 verse 23. So we're basically breaking down Sirach 36. Send thy fear upon all nations that seek not after thee. So what is the ultimate goal? What is the most high God trying to establish? He's trying to get the same thing he, he established back then with the Egyptians. So the Egyptians know that there, what, there is a God in Israel. That's the only way for him to make his name known. To delay the time and send forth judgment. And you race the very moment that they're being plagued, so he can bring forth another another judgment. The heart of their heart said, well, this can't be God. Maybe this is a coincidence. And he'll bring forth another judgment. The Most High God, he's establishing his name. That's what he's doing. That's what he did with the Egyptians. He says, for the very same fact have I raised Pharaoh up, indeed have I raised you. Let's get that real quick in Romans before we get there. So I'm saying all this to say Brothers, this is going to get worse before it get better. It's going to take some time. And what we cannot do is have the mindset of when is it going to come about? Because you're going to be disappointed. The Most High, it's all about, it's, it, he's, a, he's a master chess player. The way this world is going, it's, create, it's, it's, it's an environment that's being created to have us distrust in the Most High. I got a video I was going to play with Aries Spirits, and this is the mentality that I see coming. Personally, I see that they're trying to establish. All of these attack. matter of fact, I don't want to jump to it. I, I'll wait. I, we're going to go into that, so I don't want to put the cart before the horse. I, I'll wait and say that. Let's read Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh. Even for this same purpose. Even for this same purpose. Have I raised thee up? Have I raised thee up? That I might show... Meaning he put Pharaoh in that position. Gave Pharaoh, he gave Pharaoh all the power that he had. The pride that he had. He said, even for the same purpose have I raised you up. That I might show my power in that thee. That I might show my power within thee, real. That, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Because if you don't go about it this way then there will be another uprise afterwards. He has to establish his name so they know not to trespass him ever again. This is his final showdown with these nations. This is the last time that these Gentiles will ever rule this entire earth. And it's going to be on a whole other level. Way different than what he dealt with Egypt. So it's going to take time before we get to that, uh, for the, we get to that moment. Where we, in, that, in our patience, we have to possess our soul. And we can't be misled to think that well maybe this ain't the truth is god really seeing what's going on maybe there is another way maybe i got to get into the uh, the political movement to make a, a change god is not moving fast enough don't look at it that most i see all things matter of fact this is scripture in psalms you have to type this up it's in psalms he that made the ear psalms 94 verse 9 Book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 9. He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? So the most I created ears. You don't think he hear all this stuff going on earth? What you're crying for? What we're pleading for him to do? He said, have he, he that planted the ear, shall he not hear? Read. He that formed the eye, shall he not see? The things that you see, you don't think he see these things? He's patient. He want us to see that, okay, you know what? I'm going to wait. That's why we read that prayer earlier. Thy will be done. Thy will, thy, this is, this, it says, uh, going back to the prayer, it says, thy kingdom, mm -hmm. the glory, thy power, all of that belongs to him. The power, the glory, the kingdom forever, Amen. That's why we read that prayer, understanding where this help comes from. So it's not for us to lose faith and doubt the most highest power because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to break us to see if we're really going to give up. That's why they're doing these things against us. They're testing the waters. Let's go back to um, where, where you were. Isaiah, Isaiah. Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 23. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath. In fact, read verse 22. 
uh, verse 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, mm, that is yet to come. As, if, as the new heavens and the new earth, that is to come, read, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord. So shall your seed and your name remain. Mm. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So this is, again, ultimately the goal, that all flesh will reverence the Most High. But we, as a people, have to establish ourselves first. And we have to do that where? In the laws, statutes, and commandments. We can't pull nobody into this family affair. We sin against the Most High. So we have to get ourselves together. And then the earth will be established where all of these nations will submit themselves to the Most High. All the idols will be cast into caves, as we read it in the book of Isaiah. But the Most High is establishing his people first. So going into what we're, what we're explaining is, it says, send thy fear upon all nations that seek not after thee. Let's go back to that. Let's finish up in verse 3. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiastes chapter 36 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations. Or you wanted to. Verse 3. Oh, verse 3. And let them see thy power. As thou was sanctified in us before them. As thou was sanctified in us before them. Get that real quick in the book of Ephesians. As thou was sanctified in us before them, this is explaining what it's saying. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. The book of Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Read. According as he hath chosen us. According to as he hath chosen us. Isaiah 44 verse 1 tells you who he has chosen. That's Israel. Read. In him before the foundation of the world. So before the earth was established. Before there was a place ever known as earth or dirt for you to walk on. He had established in himself that Israel was going to be his people. Okay. That goes back to what we read. As thou was sanctified. Uh, as we was sanctified in um, as thou was sanctified in us before them, read on Ephesians. Uh, before the before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Going back to that word, sanctified, holy, without blame before Him in love. Read, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. Read. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us acceptable in the beloved. Okay, his beloved is going into Christ. That's Matthew 3, verse 17. This is my son whom I am well pleased with. This is, that's the beloved. Let's go back to Sirach. Verse 4. Verse 4. Sirach chapter 36 and verse 4. As thou was sanctified in us before them, so thou be magnified among them before us. And let them know thee, as we have known thee, that there is no God, but only thou, O God. That there is no God, but only thou, O God. Now, going back into the original thought of what I was saying, what, what type of mindset are they trying to establish? Let's get real quick, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. And the reminder was, and let them know thee, as we have known thee. How do we know God? Through the word of the Most High, of course. We know what he's all about. His judgments are known in this book. What he does to a nation for, uh, for, uh, for getting, at, getting at us the wrong way, it's all written in the book. We read about what he done to the, 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 the uh, Egyptians, what he did to the Canaanites, what he did to the Amorites. So let them know thee as we have always known thee. Read. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 1. 2 and 1. The book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 1. For the ungodly said, Reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Mm -hmm. Our life is short and tedious, mm -hmm. and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. Okay, so the point I wanted out of that was verse uh, in the beginning of verse one. It says, "For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright." Now I want to get down to the point. Jump to verse sixteen. Verse sixteen. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. We are esteemed of these nations are as counterfeits. Meaning, 
These can't be God's people. Look how they act. They wearing blue, colored hair, purple hair, pants sagging below their waist. These can't be God's people. We are esteemed of them as counterfeits. They know who we are, but they can't believe that we are his people. They're amazed at how could, how could these people be? They in gangs, Mexican cartel, uh, what, what else? What do what, uh, what uh, what they say? Uh, uh, what they, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the, the, the astonished, the proverbs out there. Married to the nations. <laughs> to the nations, what else? What, what else we got? What uh, Trump say, they're thugs, they're yeah. criminals, very bad people, they're rapists. What else he say? Super predators. These can't be the people. We are esteemed of them as counterfeits. Read on. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounces the end of the just to be blessed mm -hmm. and maketh his boast that God is his father. And he maketh his boast. This is what they say about us. He maketh his boast that they are the children of God and he is their father. Read on. Let us see if his words be true. So what did he say? What did they say? Let us see if his words be true. So all the stuff that you're seeing on the news about our people being killed, this is their mindset behind it. Let's see if his words be true. Let's see if their God is going to save them. This is all testing their power to see how far they can go with it, whether or not our God would actually stand up to the cause. Let's see how much control we have. That's all it's about. You can't attack God, so what do you do? Attack his people. This is the same plot they had in the beginning. We're going to build a kingdom that mount up to God, and we're going to, we're going to contend with God, and they confounded their language. So he said, okay, we can't go about it that way, so why don't we just destroy his people? Read on. And let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. For the, if the just man be the son of God, he will help him. For if he be the, if he be the children of God, is God going to stand in the way? Is God is going to help him? Read on. And deliver him from the hand of his enemies. And he's going to deliver him from the hand of his enemies. This is their mindset behind it. Well, real quick, let's get the book of Isaiah 45, verse 15. Matter of fact, give me, before you read that, give me the book of Psalms 64. Psalm 64? 64, yes sir. Let's read verse 1. Before we get Isaiah, let's get Psalm, Psalm 64. The book of Psalms, chapter 64, verse 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Hide me from the secret counsel Hide of the wicked. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. This is similar to the same counsel we read in Psalms 83. Removing the name from Israel and the ways that they go about doing that. Read. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Uh -huh. Who wet their tongue like a sword. Who wet their tongue like a sword. And bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Even bitter words. Mm -hmm. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. And they shoot in secret at the, at the perfect. They do it in a way that you can't see it. Whether it's the food that they give us, the chemicals in our water, you name it. It's the, the different ways that they attack us, even with the plagues they got out. I mean, like I said, I'm not even going to go into everybody. You do your research, you'll see what they do to us. The, the, the abortion clinics that's in our communities. Let us shoot at the secret and perfect. They're not going to tell you. We just want to kill y'all. No, they're going to let you fall into it. They're going to give us these, these jobs where we can't make enough to where now they can control what you eat. Because you don't have a lot of money, where are you going to go? To the dollar menu. Dollar menu. You're going to get the things that's convenient for your pocket. So they're not telling you, you've got to eat this. No, they're going to give you only a little bit so you can only afford just that. That's how they shoot in secret at the port. Read on. Suddenly, do they shoot at him? And after they do that, they shoot secretly. It says what? Suddenly, do they shoot at him and fear not? And then they have the the nerve to what? And say, oh, you know what? We done it secretly. Now so we can shoot at them suddenly. We don't have to be more. We don't have to be as secret as we was about it. We just gonna kill y'all on camera. What y'all gonna do about it? Your God ain't standing for you. Show that they shoot at us in secretly, and now. They, they came out with cameras that they wear on their shirt, and now they can just kill us on Facebook Live, on Instagram, or whatever, YouTube. It says they shoot us in secret, and suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. Why? Because they already established in our mind that maybe God ain't going to save these people. Maybe God is not going to save us. 
Let me go. Let me go into the vote. Let me see what Umar Johnson got to say about it. Let me see what all these other people got. Our, our activists got to say about it. And I'm not saying. Oh, I'm just putting some names out there. Umar Johnson. I, I don't know what he follows or believes. I'm just saying the name. Any political leader, Jesse Jackson. I'll say that one. Jesse Jackson. Let me see what these political leaders have to say about this because I'm not getting answers from the Bible. So let me look for another alternative solution for it. This is the mind that they're trying to instill. Fear and doubt. That's the same thing that the Egyptians did. When the Most High God didn't save us immediately, we started to question, like, okay, Moses, we heard what you were saying, but we, when you came here, you only made things worse. And this ain't helping. So they then began to question the help. That's the same thing, again, for the same purpose have I raised you up it's the same purpose that I raised Pharaoh. The, the mindset behind them is to, to instill fear and doubt to get you to deny the person that's coming to save you. This is why they now have a what? A space force. <laughs> We're going to go into that later. They also have a space force. So I'm, I'm going to go into that as we read on. But what the Egyptians did back then they had a reason behind everything that they seen upon earth. Okay, uh, the coronavirus. Yeah, because it's because of bats and everything else. They got to have a reason behind these things. They got to explain it scientifically so you don't say that, okay, maybe it's God. Yeah, Zika? What, what was that? Ebola? When, when are we going to actually say it's God actually doing it? No, no, they're going to have a scientific reason so you can leave God out of the equation. It's the same thing the Egyptians did. Yeah, Moses was able to turn blood, uh, the sea into blood, but we can do it too. He was able to bring frogs, yeah, but we can do it too. There's a reason for that. That's the thing. The same thing the Egyptians did, the same thing that they're going to do. The mindset behind it is, again, I can't say it enough, to instill fear and doubt. Let's go back to what we read in Sirach. No, no. Uh, please, I mean, Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah, um, let's read 45, verse 15. Isaiah 45, verse 15. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 15. Verily, thou art a God that hideth himself. But this is one thing we have to understand about our God, our power. Verily, thou art a God that hideth thyself. Read. O God of Israel, the Savior. O God of Israel, the Savior. The Savior. There is no other Savior. O God of Israel, the Savior. Read. They shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. So all of these nations, they need something tangible. They need something to look at. But he said all of them are going to confusion. All of them are going to be ashamed. Your God, I'm a God that hideth myself. I don't have to give you something to understand that I'm there. I don't have to, I don't show, I don't have to give you a vision. I don't have to come to you by dream. I don't have to give you an answer to why they're killing you. Read it. You have Moses and the prophets, hear ye them. Abraham and the prophets, hear ye them. That's the only thing you need to understand about that. I'm not going to give you an answer to why all of these things are happening. you got to have that much faith and trust in me to believe that I'm going to deliver you. That's the same thing that happened back then in the Egypt. Look, the God that sent me is the God I am. That's all that he gave us. It was whether or not that we believed it. And a lot of them didn't put the blood on their posts and a lot of them died. This whole thing is about faith. The Most High is a God that hideth himself. He, you ain't going to go into the Red Sea and find a, a, a chariot wheel. You ain't going to find Noah's Ark. You ain't going to find the Ark of the Covenant. Why would you need that? Faith, faith is the evidence of things not seen. That's what the scripture says. That's what we got to believe. Well, we got people trying to find, like, yeah, the, like the image of Christ was burned into a, uh, into a loaf of bread. That's how we know that there's evidence of a God. Look at his face. You can tell. Look at see his face. That was the most high God. The sheet that, that burned the Virgin Mary into it. That's Issachar. Talk about that's how, the, that's how the sheet came on. Help me out, Northern Kingdom. That's, how, that's, how the, the, that's the idea behind it, right? Who knows what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Explain that situation. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't want to say nothing. It's okay, no, the kingdom. Yeah, hey. We, we was all in our dogs. Explain this to me, brother. You, you, you Judah, right? Shalom. Shalom, Israel. Shalom, sir. Benji. 
Benjamin, explain this to us, sir. What is this thing going into? Oh, you talking about when the the cloth that they rock Jesus with? Yeah. And they say the blood and stuff with the image, and they say that's all we know that there was a Jesus Christ. So these folks right here got a cloth with some blood on it. Talking about that's Christ's blood and his image was in it. You, you see how that sounds? And that's because they did the DNA on it, okay? <laughs> exactly. Like, let's compare it to Christ to see if it's Christ. How, how do you know that's Christ's blood? Again, all I'm saying is, I'm, 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 saying, I'm saying this like a joke. It, it is dumb. You don't need that evidence. He says, I'm a God that hideth myself. Let's go back. Let's go back. Hey, real quick. I just want to, uh, to add on what you're saying. Go to uh, Proverbs 26, verse 27, real quick. So, you know, y'all don't, don't believe the hype. Only thing you should believe is his word, which is right here. You take, you learn these scriptures, and you compare it to what you see. All right, and you apply what you see in the scriptures. All right, read this real quick. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 27. This is talking about the man that's trying to deceive us all. Read. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. That's going to be his judgment. Whoso diggeth a pit, he's going to fall. He's digging his own grave. Read on. And he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. That's when the Lord said, Surely your recompense shall turn upon your own head. All right, when he says in Joel chapter 3. The Lord said, will he recompense me? Because this whole fight is against you. I'm going to tell you straight. This world revolves around the Israelite man, woman, and child. Everything they do is against you and nothing is for you. That's why the scripture says, never trust your enemy. Use them. Don't never trust them. Don't put all your trust in them. Put your trust in the Lord. Read up above in verse 24, please. Verse 24. Right. He that hateth, so you have to know your enemy, cause your enemy ain't the uh, ain't a ain't a red dude with horns in a in a in a tail. All right, read on. Come on. Dissimileth with his lips, right? And layeth up the seed within him. So he that dissimileth with his lips, he that is known of his lips, like you read earlier in Psalms chapter sixty-four, Cap. Mm -hmm. We read about what was that again? Uh, you said uh, the scripture was like. Um, with their tongues like swords, meaning they deceive you with their medias, with their nice smooth sayings, how they flip certain things to make you seem like, like, listen, this is what happens. The brother got murdered, right? You can clearly see it's clear, it's clear as day. And then the fact that they have to say, well, what did he do? That's already a sword against your intelligence or your mind. Because now you start saying, okay, what did he do? God forbid it was something that was with a child, or something that had to do with a woman, then everybody's mind would have been like, oh, you know what? He deserved that. Mm -hmm. And that's how they gear your mind. Meanwhile, your brother is getting killed. Your sisters are getting killed. Your children are being killed. It's not right. It's not right. You'll have the video footage right there, and they still find themselves not guilty. That's the, how they frame their tongues. That's swords. Read on. Come on. Uh, you want Psalms yeah. 64? Nah, verse... Uh, okay. Proverbs, 25 25 yeah proverbs chapter 26 verse 25 right when he speaketh fair mm -hmm. believeth him not believe him believe not. him not for there are seven abominations in his heart right because his agenda is nothing but evil all right plain and simple now he ain't talking about going this ain't a white man rant what we're trying to get you to understand is don't believe the hype only consider it for your own self as in uh the scripture says be circumspect all right, be circumspect. Read on. Whose hatred is covered by deceit. Whose what? Whose hatred is covered by deceit. Because their nice smiles and what they do good for you, really, is that's the deceit that they cover with their, with their hatred. Y'all understand? They really hate you. So that's why I said earlier, use their company, use them only for yourself, for the betterment of yourself, and your families, etc., but don't trust them. Don't invest yourself wholly in them because that energy can be geared towards Israel. Read that again from the top. Whose hatred is covered by deceit, mm -hmm. his wickedness shall be shown before the whole congregation. His wickedness shall be shown before all people. You get me? I mean, it's going to be exposed. For example, I'm going to be quick. I'm sorry. Over there in that area, right? This is how this dude, y'all probably seen it too, where they'll have agents among, or co-conspirators amongst those crowds actually tearing up the, what was it, the auto zone, breaking the windows. Why? To incite that, 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 that idea that we are, what do they call it, super predators, 
All right, but you you'll have physical evidence of the cop. They showed a picture of the cop, and when he was in basically a hazmat suit, walking by the daggone um, uh, what is it called? The auto zone, smashing the windows with a daggone um, with a hammer. There was also I seen something where a sister was like, Jake don't have no uh, tools like that to cut into the side of a building. Mm -hmm. She said that the sister said that there was like triangles on the side of the building that they cut into, and I guess they threw something in there to make the target uh, blow up. And I I said that way before the videos was made, or I knew about it. Was that how is it that Jake is worried about food, clothing, and water, gas ma or mask on their face, and uh, the, the the stimulus check and etc. And they got time to have the resources to burn down the building. Do not believe the hype. That's why the scripture says, this is my last thing, I'm sorry. That's why the scripture says, um, the wicked shall be revealed in Thessalonians. Give me that real quick, if you don't mind. It's going to be revealed because a lot of this stuff is not going to add up. That's why right now they're kneeling. They're kneeling. Why? To show what? Listen, we're not doing the stuff they're saying. And it needs to be revealed exactly what's going on. Read that real quick. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Right. Let no man deceive you by any means, mm -hmm. for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Mm -hmm. And that man of the sin... The falling away right here that it's talking about is talking about the fall of the nation of Israel. The Lord ain't going to return until the nation of Israel falls and seeks on him. That's why the scripture says, in your affliction, you're going to seek me early. Because even at this time... The whole nation of Israel had not humbled themselves to go towards God and his program. Read on. And that man of sin. And that man of sin who is who? That same deceiver that we're speaking about right here in the book of Proverbs. Read on. Be revealed. And he's going to be revealed how? That he's actually the deceiver that's deceived the whole world. All right? So, uh, uh, that's it. That's it. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Go back over to um, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 15. Yes, sir. The book of Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 15. 15. Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. Uh -huh. They shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them, they shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. Mm -hmm. Again, but, that was a point. Because they needed an idol, we don't need one because we have a God that cannot be seen. Read on. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded, meaning confused. World without end. Read. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Read on. I have spoken not in secret. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek me, seek ye me in vain. So the Most High didn't bring judgment on the earth, and then he didn't tell you where to come to how to find comfort. He says, seek me. I am the Lord. I create good. I create evil. I establish light and darkness. So he said, I didn't, he said, I didn't, um, he said, I've spoke, not spoken in secret in dark places of the earth. And I said, not unto the seed of Jacob, seek me ye in vain. So I didn't tell the most high God to set me up a God in vain. I am their God. There are certain things that I'm not going to do because I want to prove them. I want to see what they're going to do. And I'm saying this based on other plethora of scriptures on how he dealt with us in the wilderness. He said, I brought you into the wilderness to humble you, to see what you would do, to see if you would keep my commandments or not. So he said, I didn't tell you to follow me in vain. It's not that I'm not going to do anything. I'm just not going to do things on your terms. This is why it says, thy will be done. Read on. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. I declare things that are right. Read. Assemble yourselves and come. He said, do what? Assemble yourselves and come. Read. Draw near together. Draw near together. Ye that are escaped of the nation. And what does that mean to draw near together? Same thing Zephaniah said, two and nine. It says, uh, you are two and one. You are a nation that is not desired. 
Assemble yourselves together, O nation that is, out, is not desired. Ye that wrought the judgments of the earth, uh, of, the, of the Most High. That, that's what it means to come together. Read on. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image. And pray unto God, and pray unto a God that cannot save. Read. Tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared from his, this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that, from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Mm -hmm. Look unto me and be ye saved. Look unto me and be ye saved. Read. All the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. And there is none else. Read. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. So as we read, plagues will come. Nations will rise against nations, and you will be persecuted because you are his people. Read on. That unto me every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one and say. That, again, that goes back to reverencing him as one God. That's why it says every knee shall bow. Everybody will reverence him as one God. But he first has to establish his name. And then we get to that point. Read. Surely, one sh surely shall one say, in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are in incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall, the shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Now let's go back to Sirach. We're almost done. Let's go to Sirach. Sirach chapter 4, 36, verse 5 again. Uh-huh. Verse 5. And let them know thee as we have known thee, that there is no God, but only thou, O God. Show new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Raise up indignation. Raise up indignation. And pour out wrath. Uh -huh. take, away thy, take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Uh -huh. Make the time short. Same thing we read in Matthews. Make the time short for the elections in election's sake. Read on. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. Read. Let him th that escape be consumed by the rage of the fight. And let them perish that oppress the people. Read. Smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say there is none other but we. Going back to that same thought. This is what they're trying to establish and put in our minds. That there is none other God but we. We're gods. That whole idea and thought what you had about God, yeah, that's us. That's government. Make America great again. Ain't, they ain't talking about the kingdom of God. This country don't believe in God. Yeah, it's on the back of the dollar bill, but they're not trying to establish. They don't have a seat or a room set up for God when he returns. There's only one seat in that room, and, and whatever president is voted in sits in that room. He, they believe that their inward thought is that their houses will continue forever. Their thought is not to have a place for God. This is why they have. Now, look that up real quick. That's space station. When you have armies, you have the army of America fight against the army that's in Africa or Kuwait or whatever, right? Navies. Navies fight against other navies, right? Um, what is it? Um, air forces fight against other nations' air forces. You need a space force to fight against who? Y'all get it? Y'all understand? Because they know what's up, but you don't. Because we too busy worried about face masks, gloves. That's what our mind is on. Getting paid, food checks, and we don't really understand and see the bigger threat that's really out there towards them. It's not our threat, because that's our deliverance. I just want to share one scripture while they're getting this um, real quick. And yeah. verse 5, it says, Let them know thee as we have known thee, that there is no God but only thou, O God. I'm going to give you an example of that. Because the Lord raised up this man, America, just how he did, he raised up Pharaoh. Let's see what Pharaoh said. Uh, if I can real quick, give me Exodus chapter 9, verse 27. And Cap just went over it too in the scriptures. It said, every knee shall bow and every tongue, what it says, shall tell, right? Every tongue shall confess. Shall confess. That was the song. That was the Benji song. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's the same thing. Uh, read that real quick. Yeah. Exodus chapter 9, verse 27. Right, right. And Pharaoh sent and called Moses, called for Moses and Aaron, mm -hmm. and said unto them, I have sinned he this done, time. He done what? 
I have sinned this time. He's messed up. He, he, he acknowledged it. Likewise, you've seen a little bit inklings of that with them press conferences. They they'll, they'll they was on live praying to God to remove this plague from the earth. Y'all seen those clips? Now I wrote something off the cuff, if I can read this. Okay. <laughs> God gave us grace on November 8, 2016 to change the course we were on. God had been taken out of our schools and lives. A nation had turned its back on God. And I encourage you to use this time at home to get to home to get back in the word, read our Bibles and spend time with our families. Our president gave us so much hope where just a few short months ago, we had the best economy, the lowest unemployment and wages going up. It was amazing. With our great president, vice president and this administration and all the great people in this country praying daily, we will get through this and get back to a place that's stronger and safer than ever. Read on. The Lord is righteous. The what? The Lord is righteous. This is the he that's saying this about our God. Read. And I and my people are wicked. Now look. I So what were the ways of the wicked of his people? Was what? The Egyptian customs, gods, all of those philosophies, their ways, all of them was evil. Likewise here in America. What are the evil ways that they establish here against God? That's why God had destroyed those gods in Egypt. They have their sodomite agenda. They have their uh, militia against the so-called black man, the Israelite man, woman, and child. Y'all understand? And they all gonna fall. Go ahead, Cal. Y'all got y'all found it? Yeah, yeah. You got it? Before you read that, read uh, Acts chapter 1. So, I um, lost the train of thought. Gonna get your therapy in, Cal. Yeah, ahead. I'm just saying. Hey, I'm, I'm not perfect. I just, hey, I, I tell you first about myself. Hey, I was gonna say too, uh, with us being in the wilderness, you said you mentioned earlier. You mentioned earlier something about um, rehearsal. This, don't don't never let nobody ever tell you not to keep the commandments, because the point of what we're gonna get to is keeping the commandments with Christ. So the time that you're in right now is for you to rehearse those things, so you know what to expect in the kingdom. The commandments is supposed to be able to mold your spirit into being patient saints. Y'all understand? So with that. If you know how to keep the commandments now, you brothers right here and you sisters, you, but mainly you men, y'all are set up right now to be leaders in that time to come, all right? Because y'all know how to, like when we have crops or growing things or know how to uh, manage cattle or people or whatever, civilization, because that's what's going to happen, you already, your spirit has an idea of already what to do in that time. Not saying it's going to be tomorrow and we got to do it now, but... Through generation and generation of our people growing in these laws, statutes, and commandments, our true customs are within the nation. You get me? So that's why it's important for y'all to keep these ways right now so that it can be inherited with our children in the future. Y'all y'all understand? All right, that's it. So go, go uh, read that, um, Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Let's get ready to uh, close out in this, this chapter. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Not close out, but, you know, finish the chapter. Go ahead. The book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, mm -hmm. which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Mm -hmm. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him as go. So like in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven, shall he return. So where is our Savior coming from? The heavens. So now let's go to the video. So now that they have a direction of where he's coming from, what are they preparing for? Why they trying not to get you to focus on the most high, take your fear off him, put it on them. What do they actually fear? This is the presentation of the Space Force flag. So we've worked very hard on this, and it's so important from a defensive standpoint, from an offensive standpoint, from every standpoint there is. Uh, as you know, China, Russia, perhaps others, uh, started off a lot sooner than us. We should have started this a long time ago, but we've made up for it uh, in spades. We have uh, 
developed some of the most incredible weapons anyone's ever seen. And it's moving along very rapidly, and we have tremendous people in charge. And uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just start by asking some of those folks to say a few words and uh, the importance strategically, militarily, and even from a pure civilian standpoint and from uh, bringing our economy back, everything is going to help so much. All made right here in the USA. And it's going to be very special, very important. Space Force, first time in 72 years plus that we've opened up a new branch of the United States military. The Air Force, I believe, was the last one. And so we have Air Force, and not since the Air Force has anything like this happened, and now we have Space Force added on uh, with, uh, with full honors, I must add, with full honors. So today we're here for a uh, very important, it's really an important occasion because we're unfurling the flag, and with us is Chief Master Sergeant Roger Toberman, and he is, uh, I'd like you to say exactly, because his rank is a very special rank. So basically, what he's saying that he is a, he's establishing another branch to the military called the Space Force. Now, this was an old meeting that they had. They actually have a flag now that's dedicated to this Space Force. And what it is, is putting weapons in outer space. Now, the question is, what do they need weapons in outer space? Mm -hmm. They're not shooting asteroids before they hit the Earth because we have never had an incident like that happen ever, ever. Hey, Y'all ever heard a meteorite hit the Earth? That it need, now we need weapons to prepare for the next one to hit? So the question is, what are they putting weapons in space for? Why do they need, I would say, let's say guns. Why do they need guns in space? Why do they need a military branch in space? Because in like manner as you've seen them go, so shall he also come. They know which direction he is coming from. They know he's going to enter here, so what they're going to do is fight against your salvation. But what he, what they need to do is not only fight against him, they need to, again, put fear in you. So you can understand that, look, what we're fighting against is some outward attack that might come in, so we need to be all on the same page. What's coming here is an alien. We don't want to be attacked. We want to establish America, and we want to keep you here. We want to, we want to make America great again, but we have to weaponize uh, space. So if any attacks come from that direction, we can deal with it. Hence, forget about your God coming to save you. We can make this right here in America. Just trust in your government. So at the same time, what they have to do? Keep killing us so we can lose faith in the Most High, and they can try to destroy his army when he sends them out to redeem us from this earth. That's the whole plan. But they're gonna, it's gonna come tonight. It's gonna come tonight because the Most High already got it marked. He said the second entrance. They're gonna look and they're gonna try to fight, and they're gonna be scared, but they durst they fight, and he said, all he did was open his mouth and his sword consumed. He didn't, help, he didn't hold neither shield nor sword, but a devouring, fly, uh, a devouring fire came out of his mouth and devoured the, the multitude that was before him. So that's what's going to happen. That's prophecy. Um, I think the movie might be The Day the Earth Stood Still. The Day the Earth, yeah. Keanu Root Reeves movie. Yeah, Keanu, Keanu, Keanu You know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking okay. about. Okay. I know exactly what you're talking about. I was watching the movie. I forget the name of the movie, but it, again, that was going to, it was going into what I was talking about earlier, the meteorite movie. They put in our head the thing that's that's why it's coming. They put all types of ideas. This is what's coming. It might be a meteorite coming. We got to shoot it down before it hit Earth. No, the Earth abides it still. Right. They always trying to bring, like you were saying earlier, some type of logical explanation as to why certain things on the Earth happen or why certain things in the scriptures happen. Like you got a documentary right now. It's been out for a while on the History Channel where they go through every single play to see exactly how it happened oh, yeah i saw that and they're trying to basically take uh tamper at your faith basically that the bible's not real mm -hmm. and the reason why the frogs came out of the water was because the blood was in them so how did the blood start and reason why the cattle died is because uh what there was no ve uh, vegetation, vegetation from yeah. the water and the cattle died and the reason this okay so that's why the lord cranked it up and was like how did we kill the firstborn how did the lord kill the firstborn 
So likewise here, they've been preparing your minds for years. That's why you got Star Wars. Mm -hmm. That's why you got uh, End Time, Doomsday uh, movies. That's why you got uh, Marvel's Infinity Wars. Is that what it's called? Or Thanos yeah. and all that. They've been preparing your mind so when you see it out the sky, you're going to be like, the movie was real. No, Negro. The Bible been real. And they mimicked it from that. Y'all get what I'm saying? That's why you, when you're in the spirit, you see so many similarities between the scriptures and what you see on the screen. It's because they already know the program. And these, I mean, everything coincides with itself. These people that have the tongue to deceive the people are the ones that also paint the agenda in your brain with the media. You get me? So that's the, the world that we live in. The attack is against you, no matter what. And then so like, if I speak to you right now, because I know a lot of y'all might be new, and these, I came in here the first day, a second week or whatever, these brothers talking about uh, uh, chariots and aliens or whatever, they're crazy, right? But that's the thing, that's how much the world has tricked me that we bring in this Bible is a fantasy is not real they've already gotten majority of our people y'all understand but if you have faith he's gonna come like scripture said he's gonna come exactly how he left which was from the sky y'all understand oh just one scripture i'm sorry uh Revel um romans 13 verse 11 this is what we've been trying to tell our people romans 13 11. yes sir mm -hmm. The book of Romans, chapter 13, and verse 11. Uh-huh. And that knowing the time. This is that time. This is the time. The time is now. To what? Get yourself together. Because as the scripture was saying earlier, the Lord made the ears. You don't think he hear everything that you're feeding your spirit to? That you're entertaining yourself to? The Lord made the tongue. You don't think that he knows what you're saying? Or if, even if that, what you're doing? How you think he tested the hearts of the reins of man. He made you. You don't think he know? His eyes are ten times brighter than the sun. Meaning before you do something, he sees what you're doing. And when you do it, he sees it. That's why the scripture says, And that day your sins shall be their own accusers. You're not even going to walk before the throne. You're going to know you in sin. If you don't get yourself right of your sins right now. So the time is now. Get yourself together. Read on. Mm -hmm. That now is it is high time to awake out of sleep. Because look, you are your own book. And when the Lord judges your book to the book of life and he finds your book worthy of fire, he's going to burn you up. You understand? Straight up and down. Because ain't nobody supposed to be in the midst of weeds, smoking, reveling, fornications, getting into all kind of wickedness. You're not, nobody's supposed to be doing that. You understand? Murder, willful murder, all of that. You ain't supposed to be doing that stuff. Read on, come on. For now is our salvation nearer than we than when we believe. So all forms of evil says now our salvation is nearer than when we believe. You want to know how our salvation is nearer than when we believe? Because long behold, they call us thugs, right? Them same so-called thugs are finding this word. You understand? They're repenting of their ways. You have thoughts turning into righteous women. You have Bastard kids and whatever the case may be. I'm sorry to say so vulgar like that. But we're learning that we've been had a father. We've had a father in heaven for years and we haven't known it. The Israelite man ain't black no more. We know we Israel. We're changing. You get what I'm trying to say? That's how the time right now is nearer than when we ever believed before. Read on. Come on. Verse 13. Right. Let us walk honestly. As in the day. So the case and scenario and the fact, the case and point is that we walk honestly. We walk honestly. Meaning you do what's right. You understand? Read on. Come not on. in rioting. Not in what? Not in rioting. We ain't out there with the riots. You understand? We're not out there in the clubs. That's what that's going into. Reveling, rioting. Y'all following me? And neither should you young brothers and you young sisters and you men seek to be in that lifestyle you understand because that's a life of hell it's not peace it's not peace I used to be afraid to go to the club i did house parties why because i didn't want to get shot just having a good time you get me so the lord raised you up to have feast days amongst people you should trust on his high holy days you understand to have a good time amongst those that believe you y'all understand so brothers 
Sisters, y'all are new that come in these doors. This is a safe haven from all the mischief and hell out there. And you brothers that's in here, y'all got to keep that culture going. All right? When you come into the door, we say what? Welcome home, right? Because this is it's a different place than out there in the world. This is the true home. Read on. Come on. And drunkenness. And drunkenness, read. Not in chambering. Not in chambering. And wantonness. And wanton whoredom, lasciviousness, read. Not in strife. Not in arguing and bickering and fighting. Uh, you, you see, uh, what is it? That show, The Boondocks. And they had a, a, a nig moment. I want this to go on YouTube, so I ain't going to say the N-word. But they had a, a nig moment. We get mad over anything. Shoes. We get mad over uh, all kind of simple stuff. Read on. And envy. And envy. Jealousy. All right. Killing to do, to get what's not yours. Envy in somebody. Read on. But put ye on. This is the point. This is how you solve all of that stuff above. Read on. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning you got to try to mimic Christ the best of your ability. You understand? Y'all have to mimic Christ the best of your ability. That might not be a problem for us right now because we ain't keeping Christmas. We ain't keeping um, all those false holidays and stuff like that. Your fight may be what's really the inside of you, which is your anger, your frustration, your being impatient. You understand? You're not reviling. Those are the things that you have to try to fight. Read on. And make not provision for the flesh. So you come in as... You were when you came from the world, but you're not going to leave that way. You should not be leaving that way. So today is the Sabbath. Next Sabbath, you should be better than what you was the previous Sabbath. Why? Not for no Christianity doctrine, but because you're trying to mimic Christ the best way and possible of your ability. Y'all understand? Y'all trying to be Christ-like. Read on. Read again from the top. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on Christ. Read on. And make not provision for the flesh. Uh-huh. To fulfill the lust thereof. I say, how you put on Christ? Do I just put him on like a jack? It's that simple. You put him on, meaning you do what he do. Stop worrying about if I can keep this commandment and do it. I made haste and delayed not to keep his commandments. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Read that verse again. And make what? And put, make mm -hmm. and make not provision for the flesh. And don't worry about those things that get you back into the world. All right, back into that lifestyle of that hell that you was in. You get me? Meaning, you got to cut those things off. If your problem was lust and weed and drugs and all that, whatever it is, hatred. If your problem was uh, reveling, drunkenness, you got to stop it. Stop it now so that you can be able to be sober-minded in the spirit and in the deed. Read on. To fulfill the lust thereof. And that's all that does at the end of the day. If you don't put on Christ, it fulfills your lust. It fulfills your sin. That's it. All right, so let's, let's, let's end this off. Let's end this off. Let's go back to Sarah. What did we leave off at? Uh, uh, verse uh, nine, nine, right? Uh, we read 9 and 10. Okay. We're going into verse 11. Uh -huh. Verse 11. Sirach, read 10 again. Read 10 again. Sirach chapter 36, verse 10. Smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say, There is none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name, and upon Israel whom thou hast named thy firstborn. O be merciful unto Jerusalem, thy holy city, the place of thy rest. Fill Zion with thine unspeakable oracles, and thy people with thy glory. Going into him putting his word into us, that we may do it upon earth. Read. Give testimony. Fill the people with the glory. Read. Give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning. Okay, we read that in Ephesians. Read. And raise up prophets that have been in thy name. And we also had prophets. When Ezra prayed this, we had prophets that came after him and that was raised up in his name. Read. Reward them that wait for thee. And let thy prophets be found faithful. Mm -hmm. O Lord, hear the prayer of thy servants according to the blessing of Aaron over thy people. That all they which dwell upon the earth may know that thou art the Lord, the eternal God. So when Aaron prayed this, he saw things that we would be dealing with. And not only that, he saw things that he was they was dealing with right at that moment. So the fight has always been the same. The nation's ammo has always been, been the same. To get us, to remove us far from our God, to see them as God so they can establish their kingdom forever. But we, well, we know that the Most High's kingdom will be established. So I'm going to end it there to say this. 
Whatever it is that you all are dealing with, we pray that you all come together. Whoever you haven't found anybody in here that you have not fellowship with throughout this time that you've been at home, not working possibly, and you sit at, at home alone by yourself, you out of the spirit. I say that you out of the spirit because the scripture says endeavoring to keep the unity. If a man goes straying alone, he is going to fall by himself. I say I spent half of my days at, at Ehud out. We men, this brother saw each other almost every day. So it, it, it's, it, the fellowship is good. Like it, it's not just his house, just everybody's house. It was just good. It was just and and for yo and for those that did that. Y'all see how good that actually felt, right? To be over each other's house spending time? Let's keep that going. Don't let this whole thing be over, the pandemic over, and now y'all act like y'all can't come around each other. Oh, that was just only for the COVID-19. Right. No, do it all the time. This is the way it should be going. Don't never break that fellowship that y'all have because we're going to definitely need each other because they're trying to attack all of us together. Not individually. They're going to attack all of us because we're as people. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.